Yeah. Broco, broco. Broco, broco. We in new modes. And we do it better sticking together. Won't bend, won't fold. No, I got your back to whatever weather. Rain, sleet, or snow. Make it profit while we get to the cheddar. We in that mode, you know if we got a problem, we pull up in that jet, fit fall on my bro. Collective like the colors in the rainbow. All of that talking you did on the net, we know that you only did it for a post. If I pull up and I get in the tank, I need me like 500k for a show. Or maybe mo, and I got all of the stars in the ceiling, cause we in a row. Yeah, just for the bros. Brothers forever, so you know, you know we got each other back. We aiming for gold. Sticking together, tell us about the weather, we never slack. Gotta stick to the code. Bro code, bro code. We in new modes. And we do it better sticking together. Won't bend, won't fold. No, I got your back to whatever. For weather, rain, sleep, or snow. Make it profit while we get to the cheddar. They know we own. Take off, we got diamonds to tone. This is our throne. We in that zone. What up? What up? What up? It's your boys back in the lab. You know who it is. I ain't gotta say it live but one time. It's your boys from Broco. Coming to you all crunk and hype because we got a juicy. Juicy Berry topic. Stay yes. juicy. Straight juice. Ju- juicy drip 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 juicy. Drill, man. Drill. Keep it out of size. <laughs> but just just <laughs> got him crazy. Hey, juicy. And it was and it was old time three five seven. Just got him crazy. Just just <laughs> juicy. Okay. Just, get some of that. Get some of that. Get some of that. Hope, yeah, y'all, hope, yeah, y'all, yeah, hope, y'all, hope y'all fingers clean. <laughs> <laughs> sanitize, man. The world we live in, we got to sanitize yeah. these days. Okay. <laughs> what, what, what's that topic, man? Since it's so juicy. Let us today, get it. Today's topic is, as a man, uh oh, how important is mental peace and self love? Ooh. Mm. So before we get deep into give, give that, give it to them one more time. Give it to them so they so they make sure they clear and understand. As a man, as a man, how important? How important is mental peace mm-hmm. and self love? Now before I get deep into that, I, I took the initiative to do a little research and get a little definition. Okay. So what is the meaning of mental peace? Okay, mm-hmm. mental peace or peace of mind is a mental state of calmness or tranquility. A freedom from worry and anxiety. Mm. Okay. Mm. But why is mental peace important? Okay. Inner peace calms our mind and allows us to see our path much clearer, helping us focus and keep track of our goals. Having clear Mm -hmm. goals is like having a compass. Mm -hmm. You know where you want to go, you aim for it, and you commit to the road. Trusting that all obstacles are worthy challenges rather than intimidating threats. Mm. Mm. Man, that's okay. a whole mouthful right there. Yeah, that's yeah. A mouthful. So, so every yeah. word was true. So yeah. when I thought about that, the first thing I had to ask myself is when you look in the mirror, you ask yourself, do I have peace? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does everything I do on a daily basis bring me peace? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, to you, to you guys, like, how important is that mental peace? Especially like, the older we get, oh. we deal with so much more than we did when we was younger. Right. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. I feel like peace is very important. It, but yeah. how important is it? It's, it's very important, man. Um, and, and I like that definition. Um, you know, and I, I like to add to that, too, <clears> man. <throat> mental peace. You know, when you can hear yourself think, Oh. Like you're you're in a place of peace. Say you know again, what I'm saying? Because man. yeah, yeah, when, when you can hit like you can hear your thoughts, you can mm-hmm. hear yourself mm-hmm. think, like you're you're at a place where you can really kind of digest uh what's going on in your life, where you need to go, how you need to self-direct. Uh, but if you're not in that place where you can't hear yourself think, you can't hear your thoughts, you it's easy to be all over the place. Mm-hmm. Which causes that anxiety that you spoke mm-hmm. of and that definition and everything like that. So um, yeah, man, I, I think it's very important, um, you know, us, uh, where we at in life, you know, we have families, you know, we have to keep up with our health and everything like that. So if you're all over the place, something's getting neglected, right? So mm-hmm. not to say that you will be in peace every minute of the day, right? but you need to really find a place or find a, um, a, a space mm-hmm. where you can say, you can reflect and say, yes, this is my peace. And 
focus on your goals, set some goals mm-hmm. and everything mm-hmm. like that. So it's, it's very important to do so, that. So, so, yeah, I, so, so mental peace for me is 100% important, right? Oh, yeah. So you, you, not only is the mental peace brings about health benefits, right? Mm-hmm. True. That, that may be a reason why, like men, we don't live as long as women. Yeah. True. Right? right. Yeah. Could be, you know what I'm saying? Without mental br- peace brings about stress. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And so with stress comes a lot of other problems. The like silent the, killer. The silent killer, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I mm-hmm. found out too is that, you know, with, <clears throat> with mental peace, you'll find out that you get a lot of rest, right? Yeah. Your 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 sleep becomes better, uh. right? You sleep like when you're not worrying about stuff, man, right. you sleep like a rock, yep. right? Mm-hmm. If you if 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 your mind is all over the place. Sleep. Your sleep is going to be terrible. Yep, mm-hmm. exactly. And you know what I mean? And it's going to start affecting your health. Right. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know what I mean? Yep. Man, there ain't nothing like mental peace. Mm-hmm. And you know, I think at this age, um, we learn what mental peace is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? So now we seek it out. You know, in our earlier years, we didn't know what that was. Mm-mm. You know, a yeah. lot of us were living in chaos, and it was normal. Right? right. Exactly. You know, we knew what it was. Yep. It was familiar to us. It wasn't foreign. Mm-hmm. Peace was foreign, mm-hmm. right? Yep. So now that we understand peace and you and you get just a little bit, it gives you a thirst for more. Yeah. So then you you seek that out. And that comes in the form of eliminating relationships, mm-hmm. leaving jobs, <laughs> leaving like relationships, marriages. Toxic. Yeah. Um, yes, that toxicity. Yeah. That's that's mm-hmm. that word that people uh say, but they don't really understand what toxicity is. Mm-hmm. Um, them, them things that they, they, don't, they don't have your best interests at heart. They, right. don't, they don't bring you joy or happiness or mm-hmm. peace. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like Rico so, said, when you, when, you, when you had that mental peace, man, sleeping at night, yeah. that's nothing. And I, and I think a lot of stuff, like all the other things, kind of plays into the overall mental peace. Like mm-hmm. if you want to say Financial peace, yeah, financial freedom, yeah, that yeah. can help your mental to where yeah. you can go to sleep at night and you're not worried about, yes. man, where, where I'm gonna, where I'm gonna get the money for the mortgage right. or whatever next right. month. Right. Where I, right. How am I gonna get my son into, into sports, yeah. That's right. car payments and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. So those other pieces affect your your overall. Mm-hmm. I think mental peace is probably at the top. It's got to be other. You got to protect different. the mind first because if you don't protect the mind. Right. Then you won't be able to focus at work. You can lose mm-hmm. a job. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. You, you know, you, you can fall behind on your car payment. And it's and it all that stuff causes more stress to you. Yeah. And so yeah. It has I, a I can, snowball I can, effect. Yep. I can I can be a, a, a witness <clears throat> to that because you know, a, a while back, I really didn't know how important mental peace was. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I can I can be on on the, on the set to be, give a testimony on that to the cause of the point I, I was like going, going, going all the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The situation I was in, I'm, I'm trying to be the breadwinner, I'm trying to be the, the provider, mm-hmm. I'm trying to, you know, you know, take on this, take on that, trying to put all this time and energy into it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was going to the gym, working out. Yeah, I was eating, but I wasn't eating like I was supposed to be eating. Healthy, you know yeah, yeah. But the, 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 but the main part that caused the most was the fact of the matter when I laid down, as you said, we go, like that's that's that peaceful sleep never came. Mm-hmm. Okay, my mind was always on. Okay, tomorrow I got to get up because I know I got to handle this. Yeah, I know I got to handle that. Yeah. Okay, it got to the point where the stress came in, and like you say, it's a silent killer to the point where, before I know it, now I see him battling cancer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So now my mindset was like, okay. I got this sickness, I, I never seen it coming because, you know, you're a witness, we're in the gym every day going at it. So you would have never thought, you know, something, somebody who always, you know, exercising, you know what I'm saying, would, would get that, you know what I'm saying? So the mental peace part, you know I'm saying, it came to the point where it took for me to get sick like that, for me to realize you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna get emotional. I promise myself I'm gonna get emotional. It's all good, man. I'm right there with you. I understand. You I promise myself I'm gonna get emotional. We're gonna hug it out, man. You wanna hug it out? But yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> that's what I get. You know what I'm saying? I'm better now than I was. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it, 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 it took for that, yeah. you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. to you know, almost take me out of here. Right. For me to realize, listen, you gotta slow down. Yeah. Okay? You have to rest your mind. Okay? Everything that's going on around you, you got to take that time to be able to find 
that inner peace. Yeah. Okay. And so one of the main things that the doctor told me while I was battling cancer, the number one thing he said, you cannot be stressed. Mm -hmm. All right. He said, because if you become stressed, everything that you're fighting, everything you're going through is obsolete. So I tell everybody, when I tell everybody this story about me, you know, battling cancer, I feel like God gave me cancer for a reason. Mm -hmm. Because basically it taught me how to basically not be so stressed. Mm -hmm. That it's certain things that you're going to go through in life you can't control. Right. You can't basically, you know, try to conquer the world all the time. Right. Sometimes you just got to chill. So now, you know, after beating that, now when I'm in certain situations, the first thing I do is tell myself, you know what? Don't worry about it. It's it gonna be what it is. It's gonna. You know what I'm saying, no matter what drama comes or what I go through, I tell myself, listen, it ain't worth going back to what you came from. Yeah. And so yeah. we as men, we have to <coughs> definitely realize, you know, because some men are in different situations. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? But you gotta take that time to yourself to realize, hey. If I'm dead and gone, this stuff still gonna be going on. Exactly. So you gotta take that time and pull yourself back and say, hey, out of all this I'm dealing with, where's the peace in that? Right. So, so in doing that, in your situation, or in many men's situation, do spouses contribute to mental peace? Yes. You would, you would. So or significant it, others? It depends on if they're the one that's causing the turmoil. Because some people are in relationships, their stress come from the significant right, right. other. Yeah, and, okay. I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I can speak on that, man. You know, for me, you know, being married and, and now divorced, mm -hmm. um, you know, I was in, and in, 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 in not speaking negative of my marriage, but as we related to peace and everything like that, Right. me being uh, a man and a man that considered himself a provider and a protector, mm -hmm. uh, we were blessed with two kids, three, you know, three by marriage, and uh, so three kids, um, so there was a lot of responsibility um, in, in the house. You know, we had an elderly, her grandma was in the house and everything like that. We had a doll, you know, so it's like we had a mortgage, you know, mm -hmm. so it's like you, you factor in all those things. And, you know, I go to work and go to corporate America and it's high stress. And oh, you're thinking yeah. like, OK, you know, the way our life was set up, everything pretty much was dependent on me when it came to household bills mm -hmm. and mortgages and everything like that. So carrying that stress of, man, if something happens in my job, Something happens to my whole family, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So that's a lot of stress just kind of walking in that, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how a spouse, in my opinion, how a spouse can help with that is put herself in a position where, you know, if job, you know, main breadwinner job goes away, you know what, we still got something to fall back mm -hmm. on. That right there eases some 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 peace or eases some some stress um, uh, you know, going forward and everything like that. Also, like we talked about in our last show, I think we had an Ask Bro Code question, you know, what can women do more? Um, and I think one of us say, you know, be our biggest fan, you know, support us, you know, and everything like that. That relieves stress and, and, and allows more peace uh, in a man, you know. So there's definitely things to your question, Coop. There's definitely things that a spouse or a woman can do to kind of relieve some of that stress. And, and so, you, so you touched on something that, you know, my first thought was mm -hmm. as men, Naturally, we're providers. Naturally, mm -hmm. uh, we're protectors. And that's our job, and we don't, you know, defer from that, right? right. We, we take that on mm -hmm. um, full 100%, right? Yep. right? But also, choosing spouses that don't mind getting in the trenches with us, right? right? right. To right. make things easier for us, right. to yep. give us that peace so we can rest at night. Yes. And we're not thinking, man, the mortgage due, I got to go to work, I can't snap. Right. I can't, you know, get sideways with a coworker right. or be, you know, right. construed as disrespectful. Yeah. Right. Because right. if I lose my job, then we lose everything. That's right. You yep. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So um having a, a, a supportive spouse mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. says, Hey babe, I got you, no, you know, yep. I'm gonna go get this money too. That's right. It's not gonna just be you. Mm -hmm. Um and then us doing it together, you know, that definitely gives us that mental peace because yeah. now we don't have to think just me, mm -hmm. now it's okay, we, we you know, right. going forward and yeah. I don't have to worry about if something happened at my job, we lose everything that, yeah. you know, I don't work for, right. you know, because we done built this, you know, soft cushion mm -hmm. to land on mm -hmm. and we don't have to worry about, you know, anything going forward. That's right. But what, but to piggyback off of that though, like in our in one of our other shows, we talked about, you know, like from a financial standpoint, right? right. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying, some of your 
mental peace should be that you've created a, a, a safety blanket. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know definitely, what I mean? Yeah. So you do have that, you right. know what I mean, before you can just start getting, you know, so you go in there and they let you go today. <laughs> you're not all of a sudden, oh my God, what am I going right, to do? Right, because right. You've done what you're supposed to do financially mm-hmm. yeah. to, to help that mental peace, if you can, right? Every right. everybody's situation yeah. is mm-hmm. not Definitely. the same, right? Yep. But you want to, as a as a as a couple, as a married couple, or mm-hmm. as a whatever living together, whatever, mm-hmm. yeah. you want to you want to create that blanket. So if something happens, whether she has a job or you had a job, mm-hmm. y'all now all of a sudden, oh, how are we gonna yeah. pay this thing next month? And now you stressed out even more. But right. see, the thing, the thing about with me though, even with that, you know, it's just some about being able to go to work and have that 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 clear mindset, that peaceful mindset, knowing that you know, saying you know you don't want nobody standing over you talking to you like you're some little boy any kind of way, but you got to take that because you know what you got back at home. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, but I'm saying knowing the fact that no matter you got that stability at home, that if, some, if I defend myself here, some might have I might get suspended for a couple of days for standing up for myself, yeah. but. We ain't gonna go lacking because I got somebody that got my back. Yeah, well, well, right, right, well right. in that scenario, you talking about if you're in a job that's not up to your standards, right? Mm-hmm. Then the best time to look for a job is when you got a job, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so if it's not when you, you quit one, yeah, yeah right, right. So if right, it's yeah. stressing you out to the to the point to where you you pissed off every single day, looking. And, and you know what I mean. So you now now you taking that home and now mm-hmm. you you beating up your spouse about that so you could giving her mental instability, yeah. right? So now you need to go, okay, I need to check this job, right? Because mm-hmm. a job is a job, right? Right. right. right? Yeah. And another one will come, just right. like a bus, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? So so you need to look at that, you know what I mean? Instead of taking all that stress out and then now you and her, right, are confrontational because yeah, of right, that, yeah. right? Yeah. And then also I feel like, man, when it comes to, you know, the mental peace, especially, you know, whether you're dating somebody, married, or relationship, or whatever the case may be, you know, to commit to me, I feel like communication is so important. Mm-hmm. But, I, but I'm gonna look in the camera and say this. I'm saying you know, those, those are my words. You, you look at the camera. I'm gonna look in the camera and say this. To, to, <laughs> and like I said, don't, I, I, I don't want I don't want women to think that we bash women on this show. No, no, no. no, no. Yeah, but I just want you. them to be more understanding <laughs> on how we think. Okay, because basically. Sometimes communicating, when I say I want you to communicate with me, it don't always mean I want you to talk. Mm-hmm. Somehow I just want you to listen. Mm-hmm. I'm saying, because basically, if you sit here, I'm saying, listen to everything I'm saying, but you got judgment or thoughts, then you ain't listening. You're not listening, yeah. I'm saying, you're not listening to me. So mm-hmm. my thing is, you can't say that you're my support system, you're my peace, but then as soon as I tell you everything that's, that's bothering me, and the first thing come out your mouth is something judgmental or something negative, then you won't even listen to what I told you. Right. So that was in, in, in one of our shows when I said, when, in that same question, AC, when I mm-hmm. said, uh, communicate, uh, communicate better. No, oh, yeah, and that yeah. was one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you mm-hmm. know, it, it don't just involve just you know talking. Mm-hmm. You know, listen, listen. Mm-hmm. That's know, right. Act me being listen. able to come home from a rough day at work and yeah. saying, "Hey, babe, I need to, I need to vent for me." Right. Hey, lay it on me, babe. Yeah. She go get two glasses. We pull up. We just sit there and chop it up relax. for about 10, 15, 20 minutes. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That is priceless. Right. You know what I'm saying? You can't put a price on that. It goes to be able way. to go home and let my wife allow me to unload, and then we go on about our night. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If if more men were able to do that, mm-hmm. the mental health, the mental peace would be ten times what it is. And we'll look forward to coming home. And, we and relationships look forward are last to longer. Coming home. And relationships, <laughs> and relationships are last longer. would last longer. Yeah. They definitely would. Yes. And not only that, like that's like I, I can't speak for them, but I can speak for me. I ain't nothing like having a woman that you can lay on and she feel like your best friend that you can tell her yeah. anything that go through your head. Yeah. Man, I, yeah. None judgmental. None. Yeah. Judgmental. That's the key word. None judgmental. The last thing a man want to feel like when he trying to talk to his lady is her thinking, you a punk. Right. A weak. Mm-hmm. weak. Mm-hmm. You ain't this. Right. You ain't that. Get out of my house. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. We don't want to hear that, especially when we going to deal with them folks all day long and we working trying to make sure that the house is taken care of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We need to be able to come home and have that soft landing. Just like when that airplane touched down. Mm-hmm. That's all you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, That's all right. we need. That's right. And then we'll get up the next day and try it all over again. Yeah. But it's going to, I mean, I hate to play devil's advocate, but Uh-oh, it's going to be the same thing because in most situations, you know what I'm saying, both are working. 
Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. right. So it's gonna be, you know, what I'm saying, you come home, listen to her, she listen to you. Right. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying, both of y'all are trying to make that soft. But land. see, yeah. that, that comes, but, but that's what that comes from being in tune. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's 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 our job. Way. Yeah, right. that's, yeah. that's our yeah. job as as spouses, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. Or, or, or significant others, or yeah. girlfriend, yeah. boyfriend, yeah. or whatever the 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 the, the titles are. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you come yeah. home, you got a problem. I come home, I got a problem. Hey, let's talk it out. Right. Yeah. I'm gonna listen to you. You listen to me. Then we're going on by that evening. Mm-hmm. And then, and then like, we get up again some, and try. And the next sometimes, week. like it, like sometimes we just like I hate to just say it, try to be negative with it, but sometimes we just don't want to talk. We just want to be left alone. Mm-hmm. Okay, that don't mean that it's you the problem. Right. Okay, that just means, listen, baby, I had a long day. I just need some time over here to myself. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, maybe give me, give me a couple hours and, you know, I can tell you. But don't be that, that type of chick that you come in, well, what's wrong with you? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I just, I had a long day. Okay, so you want to talk about it? No, I just need a little time. Well, I'm, okay, I supposed to be here. You know saying? Wait, no, no, I just need for me, right now I just need this piece. Okay, so yeah. in a couple of hours or whatever, then we can revisit that. Mm-hmm. You, I'm saying, I'm looking at the camera again, ladies. Okay, you have to be in tune with your man mm-hmm. to know. I'm saying, if you in tune with your man, you can look at your man and tell when he had a rough day. Mm-hmm. Okay, if you in tune with your man or your woman, okay, you can look at them and say, okay, you know what, baby, come here, let me just rub your feet. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me rub your feet, girl. You know what I'm saying? I know, I'm saying, even though you I'm saying, whatever it is you want to talk about, babe, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna give you this time. But right now, I'm just gonna rub his feet and let you know you came home to peace. Yep. Yeah. Okay, no, yeah. no, knowing your partner's. Mental peace, like like they love language. You know what right. I'm saying? Like knowing their mental peace language. If it's, oh, he need an hour to himself. You know, then I'm gonna take him his favorite drink, or he need an hour to himself, and then I'm gonna, hey babe, I got your favorite food in here. Yeah. Knowing your partner's mental peace language, and not being offended. Mm-hmm. Don't be offended by it. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. he said, if he come home, he need an hour or two hours. Don't be offended. That's his mental peace language. Yeah. He gonna go deal with what he need to deal with, and then he coming back and gonna say, "Hey, babe, hey, sorry, yep. I, was, I had a rough day. This is what happened." And then go from there. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's not a you know shot at anybody. It's not uh, it meant to you know push anybody you know in any direction. Um, it's just understanding and you know being respectful to each other. And yep. so in that in that scenario, she should wait. And then come back to you so you can therefore communicate for mm-hmm. her to listen. Right. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. Okay. Right. Yeah, y'all, y'all may disagree with me on this one, man, but I'll be honest with you. I've been in enough relationships. I've been married. I've been in enough situations, relationships to know that if, if I come home and I don't want my girl around me and I need space, I've been around long enough to know now that that's a problem. Like, that should be the one person. My woman should be the one person that I always want around me. Like, you know, like, that's my peace. That's my comfort. You know right. what I mean? Even if, like, I don't feel like being bothered, but you know what? When she's under me or when she's with me or she's around me, she makes it better. Yeah, because y'all don't even have to be talking about nothing. You don't have to be talking about nothing, right? You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's like, if for me now, I know that if I don't want her around me, that's a red flag. Yeah, she's, supposed, I mean? to be, she's supposed to be your rock. She's supposed to be my rock, you know? So I've, I've been around long enough to know now that, yeah, we'll have to talk about that because... That should be the one person. Now, kids, on the other hand, all right, kids, y'all go in y'all room, yeah. <laughs> but your 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 mate, your spouse, your female, that should be the one that's nothing but peace. Yeah, I agree with you to a certain extent. I got you. Okay, mm-hmm. so all that sounds good, mm-hmm. unless the stress that you have is coming from that person. Well, that's different. Because, that's that's, my, that's my point. <laughs> so what I'm saying is basically, yeah, you would like to come home. That that sounds very fair to you. But, 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 but your scenario, good. you was coming home. Yeah, we was coming right, home. I'm saying, I'm saying, home. Listen, yeah. even 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 coming home. Some people don't want to go home. You know what I'm saying? It feels good. That's a whole nice little fairy tale scenario that you just gave. Well, it sounds good. Nah, okay, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, it sounds good. Well, I'm looking for but, a fairy tale. <laughs> okay, but at the same time, okay, suppose suppose that stress is coming from the fact of the matter of, I'm saying, you had that, that same conversation. You know, babe. You know what they 
they uh, work been work been kind of stressed out. You know, what I'm saying you know, like just going in here, just just killing me. And yeah, you you you, you, you. you talking to them, and the first thing she's saying, that, you know what? They had these shoes on sale at Macy's. You know, but it's like it's like you, it's like you thinking about shoes, and I'm telling you, you know what I'm going through. I'm saying I'm so we ain't got no money for that. Right? It's like I'm so saying. So now I'm looking at you like, okay, like we talking about. I'm saying I'm talking about work related stuff that's getting hard, and you don't think about some shoes. And then some of them you ain't even got the money to buy the shoe, but you want me to buy the shoe. I'm saying I'm saying I'm just telling you that you put all this weight on my shoulder, and now I'm telling you something to try to help get it off, and you added more weight to it. So notice what I said. I've been in enough relationships. That's, that's all past. I ain't going that direction no more. <laughs> so, so, so should I feel bad if I don't like if if I don't think like that? Like I, I get that, yeah. Mm. But sometimes I might need you know like that me time, like that personal time, right? Yeah. Before I come in, there. it don't mean that I don't feel that way. Like, right, right. like I don't want to see her because she's gonna give me peace. It just means. I I need to get in a different head. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Before I even go in there and be like, man, man check this out. I feel you, cool. You know what I'm saying? That's why they got the bar. That's why they got best friends, a home <laughs> boy you can talk to. Got them that on the way home. Oh, 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 that's, 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 that's why they got bro code. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but hey, but then, and then another thing you don't want to do is also, man, like when you bring that stress home, like I agree with you, sometimes you got to take that time yourself because like yeah. the oh, least yeah. little thing might set you off. She might say something that make you snap, and then she getting everything that somebody don't did from the whole week. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm looking at the camera saying, lady, sometimes he, he don't want to be bothered, leave him alone, yeah. give him that time. That don't mean that he basically don't want you around, that just mean he just need that time. Yeah, don't take it so personal, don't take, it's, it's not personal. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's, it's a moment. It's so a so moment. We, we, we talked about mental peace and how important yeah. that piece is. So let's move on to self-love. So one of the main things that self-love involves is self-discipline, okay? And with self-discipline, it's the highest form of self-love because you are what you do. Self-discipline isn't just about willpower. It's also about having a positive outlook on yourself. As you improve yourself, you improve your life. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna be man enough to be on this camera, look at this camera and say, that's one area I struggle with. So a, lot, a, lot, a lot of us. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna be mad enough to be on this camera. We keep it real on bro code. Well, okay. I, I self love myself. I, I, I struggle oh, yeah? with that. They, are we supposed to be talking about that on on this show? I mean, I, I mean, <laughs> I went and got my toes did yesterday. Oh, I was, that, okay. that was my self. Okay. <laughs> so basically, the reason why I struggle with that is because, like, we as men, yeah, yeah. number one, the first the first thing that I I challenge all men that who may be watching this and women who can who can relate this to your man. You gotta know your worth, okay? Know your worth. If you're saying, regardless if you can't find out, no woman in this city to date you, know your worth, mm-hmm. okay? One of the things, like I said, I struggled with, I've been struggling with the most is basically looking in the mirror and it's like, you know what? Are you happy with that dude, okay? Do you love that dude? What is it about this dude that you, realize, that you feel like you can change or need to change, okay? What is it that you're looking at this dude? What is it that you can do to make this dude happy? Self love, yeah, and that's one of the, that's one of the areas that I feel like I struggle with the most. I work on it on a daily basis. I mean, you just had a conversation yesterday. Me saying you get ready to go somewhere for your birthday trip. The first question I ask you, who you going with? He's like, I'm going by myself. I'm like, how you do that? <laughs> <laughs> we talk about but this all the time. All the time. We, he he, he, he witnessed that. He I, he I, he I struggle he with he that. He don't take sand to the beach? No, but, it's not, well, it's not, not even that. that. Like, <laughs> I'm complete, and, and I've told you this before. Right. Like. The biggest accomplishment in life is being comfortable with, with being by yourself. Yes. Mm-hmm. Once you become being, once you master being comfortable being alone, mm-hmm. bro, it don't even matter. Yeah. You, I, I go out and I can be in a place with hundreds of people, but I'm still alone mm-hmm. and I'm cool with that. Yeah. And I don't feel no type of weight and I'm having just as much fun as the next person with two or three people at the table having a conversation, yeah. with me just being at the table, eating, drinking, and doing whatever I'm doing. Yeah. You, 
going to the movies. Yep. I go to the movies, or used to go to the movies by myself all the time. Yep. And would get my popcorn and be in the front row. Yeah, like that. Yep. Hey, man. You <laughs> said I'm happy. I'm so, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so yeah. I always say this term right here. I know we ain't supposed to be using no foul language, right? But <laughs> I always say. terms. Yeah, yeah. I say, man, I look in the mirror and it's like, this motherfucker me. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what Who wasn't going to be? Right. It's me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Once you get to that point, like, man, when you, nothing I'm telling doesn't y'all, matter. If y'all say that term right there, I don't know why. That, that would give me confidence no matter what. It's motherfucking me. Right. right. It, yeah. don't, it don't matter what you yeah. put on. Hey, Walmart t shirt, jeans. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It don't matter. You got to be securing yourself. I've yeah. always loved myself. Love right. me some AC. You got you know? to, bro, because nobody one, else is going yeah, to. The one thing I was saying when you read, when you was reading that, oh, is one thing that, you know, we I think we all struggle on is you, you mentioned discipline. Mm. That word, the word I was looking for too was consistency. Mm, like right. being consistent is very hard, you mm. know, and it's, and it's not per se. Us as individuals, it's just the world that we live in, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you, you, wear so, you got so many responsibilities, you wear so many hats. But as we get older, being consistent is very important. And I know that's, a, I know I struggle with that. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, whether it's going to the gym, consistently going to the gym. You go for three weeks, three months, and then you stop, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. um, or eating right. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's just so many things as we talk about self-love where we can get derailed so quickly mm-hmm. because of the lifestyle that we, or not the lifestyle that we live, but just the, the responsibilities that we have. So consistency is, is very key. I, I think probably the, the and I'll say the best thing that happened to me that got me to that point mm-hmm. was going in the military. Even though the military teaches you like team perspective, mm-hmm. you learn individuality because when you PCS from base to base, you don't know nobody. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So you coming in, you the new person, right? right. Yep. So you meeting all these new people. So you still might be going to lunch by yourself. Right. Mm-hmm. You might be nobody. working by yourself. Right. right. You, 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 you learn the area by yourself. Yep. Until you work with these people and, you know, intermingle with these people long enough to develop friendships and then y'all start hanging out. Yep. How, how you know often did you move around? I mean, I PCS, mm, what, twice, went on deployment once. Um, you know, in four years, but you talking about, again, you know, coming in, being yeah, brand new, meeting yeah. all these new people. Because yeah. you have to do yeah. stuff like yeah. the, you, you went to training, you kind right. of start by so, yourself, I mean. Right, so you go to training, it's just like going, you know, when we went to college, you even know though, you know, us four went together, yeah. when we went to individual classes, we still, you know, own. met we people, we was on our own. Yep. Right. So, I mean, it's the same concept, but just on a different level. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so military did that for you, and I would say for me, <clears throat> my indiv- individuality came after I graduated from Georgia Southern. So mm-hmm. when I moved to Atlanta, like you said, no when, we, yeah, when we left in 95, when we left high school in 95, four of us, mm-hmm. four of us together, and it was probably like eight of us from our from our high school that was all there. Part, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like we, we went to a big college, but we still had people that we knew. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until five, six years later when I got to Atlanta mm-hmm. where I was like, whoa, there's nobody here but me now. Right. You know what I mean? Then you don't so, know nobody. You don't know nobody at work. You don't right. know nobody, you know what I'm saying, your apartment complex, you right. go to the gym, you meet new people, this person look crazy, you know? So it's like, whoa, this is where I had to really mm-hmm. learn, like, okay, AC, family nowhere around. Mm-hmm. So, but it's important, man. And then from then on, I had no problems being by myself. You know, to this day. Yeah. So basically, I've learned a couple of little steps here on how to learn, how to practice self-love, okay? So I'm going to read the first four to you. Number one, which I thought was kind of interesting, cast out the idea that you have to be perfect. Okay. In parentheses, I put in the only person that is perfect is God. Right. And I think some people struggle with that, trying to be that perfect person in the eyes of other people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you basically have to realize just because you're trying to be perfect for them, they ain't perfect. So you not you should have to do all that. Okay. Yeah. Second one is understand that sometimes society expectations offer unrealistic standards. You can't live with everyone's expectations. Simple. Okay. Three, live in the moment. Just for a moment every day. Live life to the fullest. Concentrate on what makes you happy first, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. Four, and this is important because I feel like I do this a lot, and most people might take it as arrogant or make it conceited, but it's me, okay? Daily gratitude. Recite daily what you are thankful for. Mm-hmm. That's the first four I'm going to read and let y'all implement on that. 
So I'm going to go and I'm going to add to that. And I think when you're talking about self-love, you have to also add in there um, self-care. Mm -hmm. Because if you love yourself, then you're going to take care of yourself, whether that's in the form of working out daily. That right. pedicure. That going manicure. to get that pedicure. Mm -hmm. you Haircut know what I'm once a week. Haircut. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff like that also results in self-love. Mm -hmm. Because like you wake up and you say, I'm that dude. When you get that haircut, Oh, no, this, yeah, this. you're a little extra. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. You're right. That beard up. Right, right. right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. So it, 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 it <laughs> embellishes and it, it improves that feeling that you have, even if it's just for that moment. Yeah. You know, it magnifies it and it makes you feel like, yeah. 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 So it's, like, it's almost like do, do, do things that, that make you happy. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? If it's, yeah. if, like I said, if it's all of a sudden I want, you want a whole spa day every now and then, right? right. That's what make you feel good. Go do it. I don't care. Yeah. I'm going to get me a spa yeah, get day. Get you a mask, have yeah. a mask on, everything. <laughs> whatever, man. Whatever right. make you feel good. I you know what I mean? I go to the spa in Alpharetta every two months. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting yeah. me one of them massages. I'm getting these feet rubbed. Yep. Yeah. All of that. Oh, yeah. You, you I had to do it. I, you know, I, I get my feet done. I get what I'm saying. It, it, it is very soothing. I think they don't get the they, don't get the little need to, don't get no, number you gotta, one package. No, no, you gotta get no, the whole get, package. Yeah, you got to wrap your leg up and get your feet on your leg and all that. All that. Get that number three and that number four package where they put the paraffin wax. Yeah, they put the smell good stuff on your legs. You know about the paraffin wax? Rubbing with the yeah, man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You be walking out of that thing, those feet be so soft. Be like what? <laughs> I walked out of there yesterday, boy, I was like, right. these things. <laughs> you know how that is? Be wow. right. you, yeah. But that's that, that's that self-love stuff. And, yeah. it's, and, it's, and I'm laughing because I remember the first time I got my feet done. and Because as a man, right. that was some woman stuff. And, right. and I was right. dating this woman at the time. Right. And she was like, come on, we're going to get our feet done. Who is we? Because <laughs> I'm not getting my feet done. I'm a man. Men right. don't do that. Right, right, right. But right. you know, that's that misconception that you yeah. have when you're growing up in certain environments. Right, right. And then once you learn and you, you know, get exposed to different things, yeah. you know, Ain't nothing, and your, nothing idea, the, your ideology, ideology changes. Nothing in the book say men supposed to have Fred Flintstone. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> we can't play pussy with no Fred Flintstone, <laughs> right, man. man. You know what I'm saying? Because I like to play pussy. I don't know about y'all. Right, right. <laughs> so then we're going to come more to you, man. I feel like this one here is a, is a very important. Embrace the fact that you can't control everything. True. That's right. Okay. That's a difficult one because a lot of people get so offended when Negativity comes that way. Mm -hmm. it, it, it throws them off, you know, their game. It throws them off their, the, you know, the route and the race that they're running, and they don't know how to deal with it. And you got to realize the world doesn't evolve around how you see it. True. And I think a lot of people basically, you know, they, like, sometimes, like, me, me and AC, we, we boys, but sometimes we, like, we're on the show, like, I have to understand, okay, we don't think alike. Right. You know saying? Everybody think different. And I think that's one of the biggest things about this show that makes it so unique mm -hmm. is the fact that we all think different. Yeah. You know and we can respect each other's right. thoughts. Exactly. All the time. Yeah. Right. You know, and people don't yeah. understand it's not just on the set, it's off the set also. Because yeah. mm -hmm. we, we, we interact with each other, we call each other. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We talk about some of everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, when you have a no judgment zone like that, mm -hmm. it, it makes it easier for you to open up like that. Right. right. You so, can tell me, I'm, be ju I'm judging. <laughs> you can tell me. <laughs> well, we we know Rico. Right. <laughs> we know. Now you gonna judge. <laughs> like, like, like you just said, that goes in, that goes to number six. Self care. Mm -hmm. It's okay to pamper yourself. Oh yeah, most it's definitely. Uh, As men, you know, we we might do pampering, you know, on a different scale. You know, right. like haircuts, beard trims. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Pedicures, you know, it's man, we do a little shopping too. You know, we like to nah, we put do. a couple of little threads on. I, I I get geek. When I go on Walmart, I'm getting geek because I'm finna get me about two or three t shirts off real. <laughs> and I'm happy and I'm walking out like this. You know? yeah. And I'm cool with it. You know right. what I'm saying? Uh, so everybody got their vices, man, that, that makes them, you know, things that make them happy. Yeah. You Cookies. Know? Oh yeah, them cookies, too. Yeah, cookies be good, man. Hey, not not promoting none, but that it's it's one that stays open late nights, and they got their fire, <laughs> and you'll be happy with them. All right, number seven, check in with yourself emotionally. Mm -hmm. Look in the mirror and evaluate evaluate who you see. And I, I can say, and I'm gonna go a little step further with that, mm -hmm. and say have a um, person that you can check in with. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Have somebody that you can. 
hey man, this is where I'm at. This is how I'm feeling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that you can bounce stuff off of, that, that you know that's going to be honest and truthful with you. Yeah, you, you know definitely I mean? need an account. You know, somebody to somebody, hold you accountable. Right, yeah, accountable, accountable, yeah. Yeah. I have, I have to, and like I said, we on set, so I have to honestly say Don't be mushy, that, man. You finna be mushy? No, I'm not be mushy. Okay. <laughs> but I, have to, well, I, got, I got to give you guys credit, because like that what you just said, I feel like you guys do that for me. You know what I'm saying? Cause I can we call each other. I can call either one of y'all and be like, hey bro, tell me I ain't tripping. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going through this. And you like, especially you, you like, man, listen, man, you, man, they crazy, bro. You ain't crazy. You ain't wrong for that. So no, nah, but it ain't you. Right. Okay. So yeah. because sometimes you have to check it, like look in the mirror, like, you know what? You know, maybe I might look, look at that little difference. So let me right. check right. my boys. Right. Make sure I ain't going crazy. Right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So we like I said, it's, it's good to have somebody that's gonna hold you accountable or not, bro. You know, yeah, that was a little you you a petty, bro. Yeah. Yeah, like the situation yeah. we were talking about, you like, you know what, bro? It's yeah. funny, bro, but you were petty, bro. But you know what? I like that, but you were petty, bro. But you was. <laughs> it was funny, but you was. <laughs> <sighs> All right, number, number eight. I, I, you know, this, this is important, too, because, you know, when it comes to friendship, mm-hmm. I feel like this is very important. Tighten your circle. Mm-hmm. All friends are not good friends. That's right. Mm-hmm. Squares out Bro, your circle. I see right. these memes yeah, right. all the time that say, the older I get, the less friends I have. Man. And that is so, so true. true, true. Man. Yeah. And it's even like some of the people that you've grown up with mm-hmm. um, and y'all have, you know, aged together, but some have matured more mm-hmm. than others. That's right. Um, and it goes back to uh, what you were saying about... Um, um, Oh, I forgot what you said, but it, it it basically, you know, eliminates a lot of people and it gives you mental peace mm-hmm. because you knew whole time that them people had no business around you mm-hmm. or you had no business around them because y'all are different. You know, you got you got you got to keep similar company. Right. Yeah. yeah. Similar or better, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Especially if Preferably you're aspiring better. to go yeah. a certain yeah, yeah. direction. Yeah. Um, and if they don't feel the way you feel, or, and everybody can respectfully think the way they want to think, but yeah. you know, when, when you're constantly seeing that same immature mindset, it's like, right. can't, ask a, what broke, am I doing can't ask a broke man how to make money, can you? Yeah, you don't grow. I tell, my, yeah, I tell my boys the same thing, <laughs> man. You can't ask nobody how to get where you trying to go if they ain't never been there. They ain't never right. been there. That's right. They ain't never been there. Yeah. That, that ain't no shade, but that's yeah. just like, like you people, said. Like people you can't can go there. People, how to make yeah, money. people can go there and then you can lose stuff, right? right. So that yeah. means he knows how to get there. Right. So that's okay. But if you ain't yeah. never been there, right? You right. can't tell me how to get there. No, you, you can't. can't. You still looking just like me, right? Yeah. True. We look at each other. Yeah, so now, <laughs> Next now, we, now we really ain't going nowhere. Is, right. Eat healthier, take care of your body, mm-hmm. and what you enter in. That's important. Definitely. Yeah. That's definitely feed different. the body, feed the mind. mind. Yeah. 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 Garbage in, garbage out. Right. 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 Get moving. Join the gym, exercise, pick up, pick up a hobby. I mean, I, I do that a lot, you know what I'm saying? You got a lot of hot, hot, yeah, hot I, hobbies, I, man. Yeah, I'll say, I, I definitely, uh, I look at you with the, the saxophone. Yeah. I've, I've always wanted to, to learn how to play the sax. I just always thought it was a sexy instrument. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I just, I, I never took the time to do it, but you, you definitely got me motivated to, to, to find me a, a person to say, hey, I'm trying to learn how to play this thing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's, 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 and the thing about it is, I think... Um, what made you, uh, sorry, but what made you... Go to the, to the saxophone. It's so, a sexy instrument, man. Not, not just I not just that. Too. I actually wanted to play when I was like twelve. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So you know, being in high school, I was in the band, and um, basically at the time, you know, I went to my grandmother asked her to get the instrument. You know, she didn't have the funds to do it. So you know, they try to give me the tuba. I'm like, nah, I ain't trying to carry yeah. a tuba oh, yeah. or whatever. So you, you know, big dude, I, man. He said, nah, I, 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 he went big. That's how I was small. Yeah. small yeah. I was small. Yeah. Bro. I was small. Bro, listen, <laughs> I was smaller than they'll tell you. I yeah. was small. small. What you were like five three? What? <laughs> bro, he, he was small. <laughs> no, no, or two. Yeah, he small. was small. the smallest little in the high school. So I'm like, nah. So then I was like, okay, well, you know, I can sing. So let me. I'm join the chorus. So I joined the chorus. But I always had, like I said, saxophone is my favorite instrument. Yeah. So I. I always had that passion for it. Yeah. So then when I got to the point where, you know, I was doing a little research and a friend of mine was like, you know, you can rent the instrument. Mm-hmm. I said, yeah. you can rent, you mean you yeah, can rent the instrument? Rent, yeah. They were like, yeah, you know, you can, you can pay monthly, you know, mm-hmm. and take lessons. So the store that I rented from, they also give lessons. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, how much is the lesson? So when mm-hmm. she told me, I was like, 
I mean, sometimes I pay more than that for, for this off the wall stuff. Mm -hmm. So my, my thing is, I'm going to invest in that. So that's what I did. Good and I, I got shots out to my saxophone teacher. I'm saying I got one of the greatest saxophone teachers. And it basically, he was like, man, you only been doing this not even a year yet. And you more advanced than some of these younger kids mm -hmm. that come in because I see your passion and how bad you want to learn it. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? I even went to the point where I played happy birthday for my auntie for her birthday. That's so all right. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, and I, and I was that. like, I ain't no professional. They were like, well, you know, just you know, the, the mm -hmm. way you I did signed it. Though. You did. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. I, I challenge anybody that has a passion, whether you was a kid or not, mm -hmm. you're never too old to learn. You right. know what I'm saying? So, if it's a passion of yours, go back and get it. So, I, I, if, if you want to play saxophone, trombone, guitar, whatever, bro, yeah. go do it, bro. Hey, we had a bro called musical <laughs> on this thing. <laughs> band, bro code the band. Right. <laughs> what? Making the band, making the bro code band. So one, one of the one the, the next one is basically is an important one to me because me personally I don't feel like it, you know, it makes me like most people look at some people that feel like they, they better than other people or they feel like they're arrogant or, you know, conceited. Me, I don't think none of that. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, like number eleven, be unique. Mm -hmm. Okay, you don't have to fit in. I don't feel like I fit in. A lot of a lot of things I do, I don't feel like I fit in. I feel like I'm very different. I'm saying I tell people straight up when they first meet me, I'm, I'm different in the dude you ever meet. Mm -hmm. I'm saying most people don't believe it in today's experience. They're like, yeah, yeah, you're definitely different. It's, but you don't. I'm, I'm learning every day. You know, what I'm saying in society, you don't have to fit in. That's what I'm saying. That's one of the things I always told my boys. Like, yeah. It's okay to be different. You ain't got to be like everybody else. You ain't got to wear Jordans because everybody else wearing Jordans. If you want to wear Adidas or Reebok, wear Adidas or Reebok. Mm, right. You know what I'm saying? If everybody jumping out the bridge to their death, you finna go jump out the bridge to, they, to <laughs> right, your right. death? That's right. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. And, and society will make you feel like if you different, you wrong. Mm -hmm. Or you're strange or you're weird. Mm -hmm. But you're not. You're an individual and you're unique, like you said. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's actually a good leadership quality, too. That to, be too. Able to be able to stand out. And, Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Stand out from the rest. You know, that means you're really not being in alignment of everybody else. Mm -hmm. You can stand out and do your own thing. And then guess what? You could be a trendsetter. So mm -hmm. the earlier that kids can learn to not be a follower and just stand out and be different, I mean, I think the further they'll go because they'll see that, okay, people are following them or they're setting a trend mm -hmm. and that increases confidence and everything like that. And that's that's that big word that kids need, confidence. Confidence, that's right. It's already stressful enough going to school, trying to fit in, yep. you know. Mm -hmm. Somebody's parent make $100 million a year, somebody's parent make $5,000 a year, mm -hmm. and the, you know, the gap is different and everybody is gravitating one way or the other. That's right. And you know, it's, yep. it's, it's a lot of stress mentally. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't know how to deal with it because as kids, you know, they just, they just want to be friends with everybody. Yep. Right. Uh, but that's not reality. So continue uh, to be weird, oh. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. And, 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 and like I said, you know, you know I, I, when, I, when I hear, like I listen to T.D. Jakes every morning. Yeah. So I'm always sharing, when I hear, you know, special things that he mm -hmm. say, I share it with you guys. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that basically, you know what I'm saying, brought me to that point where, when he said that God knew that you were going to be different when he first made you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So therefore, where he put you at, he had already prepared you to be different. That's right. Mm -hmm. So that, therefore, you got to get in your mind, just because you're different don't mean you're wrong. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you think different, you act different, you do things different. Yeah. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, a lot of things I do different, you know, from a lot of my friends, a lot of my family, they were like, every time I see you doing something different, right. like you don't never sit down, you always doing something. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's who I am. You know what I'm saying? I'm always got my hand in something because I feel like the more things I do different, the more I'm learning. Yeah. And so I, I challenge everybody out there, just because I'm saying everybody say, you know, you do, I mean, if you want to do something different, be different. You don't have to be the same as everybody else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Number 12, I felt like should have been number one. <laughs> okay. And we touched on this already. So, but it, when you said it, I, I was like, oh, it's on the list. Okay. <laughs> Let go of toxic relationships. Oh, yeah. Toxic is hazard to your mind. Yeah. If only and everybody peace. understood that. <laughs> right. Yep. Just because y'all was friends in 10th grade don't mean y'all got to be friends <laughs> exactly. in the dough days. That's right. You know That's what I'm right. saying? And some people low-key jealous of you, man, from all that time mm -hmm. back, and you never knew it. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it, once again, those are our friends. We ain't paying attention to those signs. Right. You know or we think they're friends. Right, or we think they're friends. So we ain't, we ain't paying attention to those signs. Mm -hmm. You know, but if I'm coming to you, I'm telling you everything, you know, what's going on good. Yeah, man, but you know, if I were you, I wouldn't do all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why not? 
That yeah. negativity. But you can't give me no answer why you wouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. You just don't think I should do it because you can't do it or don't want to do it. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah, you definitely gotta stay away from yep. toxic stuff like that. You gotta see them red flags. You gotta like, see them signs, yeah. Including friendship, definitely. <laughs> I, I thought that was the last one. No, 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 no. We got, we got, we got, hey. <laughs> Number 13, forgive yourself. Yeah. Everyone makes mistakes. Yes. That you was saying? the one. That so one. you basically, if you've been in relationships where you, you know it, the problem was you, mm-hmm. okay? Be mad enough. Like, one, one thing oh, I did, man. one thing I did, and believe it or not, I'm saying, and the reason why I did it is because I felt like it was going to cleanse my mindset, okay? So every female that I've dated, that I did wrong, I reached out to them and apologized. The reason why I apologized to them is because the younger me was all about me. Mm-hmm. It was all about doing me, getting me, doing what I want to do, okay? But then as the older I get, I realize, okay, you didn't cause no peace in that situation. You actually caused turmoil in that situation. Okay, so you can never go back <clears throat> and make it right. But what you can do is go back and apologize for your actions. Mm-hmm. So I feel like if more people do that, I'm saying, as a man, it would, I'm saying, unless you just don't care, and that's different. But if you, if you have any type of emotional side to you, then you should want to basically make peace with that person. Yeah. Yeah, and I want to add to that, man. Like, and that's a good point. I thought you were at the end of your list, and I was like, that's one I wanted to add to it. Like, we've all made mistakes in the past. We've all done wrong. Uh, but give yourself grace. Mm-hmm. You know, like, do not condemn yourself, and don't allow others to condemn you for mistakes that you made, because a lot of people walk around with guilt and regret, mm-hmm. and it bogs them down. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not self-love. You know what I'm saying? If you're gonna, if you're gonna love yourself, forgive yourself, give yourself grace, understand that. God gives us grace every day, mm-hmm. you know. So um, that's that's a huge one right there. Mm-hmm. Just forgiveness and and giving yourself grace. Yeah. Fourteen. I feel like this is an important one um, that we should really take time to do. Meditate. Take about thirty minutes to an hour to clear your head and focus on what makes you you. Meditation is important. I'm saying I, I listen to a lot of music. Mm-hmm. You know, being a DJ, I listen to say I'm on Facebook Live sometimes. You know, mm-hmm. that like when you when you actually see me on Facebook Live, whether I'm playing a slow song, a fast song, that's my time of meditating, cleaning my head. Mm-hmm. You know, playing music that I enjoy, sharing it with the world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying whether whether you feel like I'm I'm a bomb DJ or, or, or a horrible DJ, mm-hmm. to me at that point it don't even matter. To me at that point it's mm-hmm. it more so. A, I'm focusing on the music. The music is clearing my mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when you see me, notice you never know the music. As many of the people be on live, you never notice me stop and say, what up? None of that, because I'm focused on the music because that's my time of peace and meditating. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's important to find something. I'm saying, like, man, you, like the gym. Sometimes I go in the gym, people like, I called you five times. What time you called me? Like five, oh, I was in the gym. You don't answer your phone. No, I don't answer my phone in the that's, gym. That's another important one, too, uh, setting boundaries. Right. Don't mm-hmm. answer your phone. Just because the right. phone rings doesn't mean right. you got to answer. I don't, yeah. Now, that there, yeah. if you can shut your phone down, and then not only that, I'm going to add to that. Mm-hmm. When you shut your phone down and people say, well, I called you, don't be apologetic. Listen, I shut my phone down. Okay, you can't accept that. That's on you. Do, At yeah. that point, I ain't feel like being bothered. So yeah. if you can't accept that, that's fine with me. But just, listen, it's something I had to do for me. My do not disturb is set nightly for 930. Mm-hmm. The only time I'm on my phone after 930 is I got to have it in my hand. Other than that? I, 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 in counseling, mm-hmm. my uh, therapist introduced me to this app mm-hmm. that does, like, meditation. Like, mm-hmm. it... it you, it, it, it sets and it comes on, it, it'll give you an alarm and it, it allows you or basically, you know, tells you to take 15 minutes or 20 minutes yeah. and meditate, complete yeah. silence. Yeah. And then it, it just, it not only tells you to meditate, but you have to breathe yeah. at the same time. Like yep. In and out in and out yep. and clear your thoughts. So so I'll give, a, yeah. yeah, it's basically Woosa. like a Woosa. Yeah, yeah. I'll, give a, I'll give the viewers my meditation app. It's called Abide. And I'm telling you, like I've been doing it for probably two years now. Mm-hmm. And it really helps me. And I only mm-hmm. do it at night when I go to bed, uh, when I know I'm comfortable, TV's off and everything like that. But mm-hmm. I turn that Abide on. It's abide. And it's, it's Christian based. Mm-hmm. But when I tell you, man, it, it tells a scripture or whatever it is, anxiety, whatever mm-hmm. you're going through, you can set the mood, what you're going through. 
and it's giving you scripture. It's got mm. the water running in the background. Right, right, right. Trying to, it's, yeah, it's telling you to breathe and everything like that. Sound like just like yours, mm-hmm. but man, when I tell you, it's so soothing. And mm. then once it's, once it's done, you can do fifteen minutes, you can do mm. thirty minutes, you can do sixty minutes. Mm. Um, and then once it's done, it won't turn off. They'll stop talking. But that waterfall is still going. Oh yeah, so it's still going. They, they that's good it. for sleep too. Yeah, yeah. They're, 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 I, I sleep yeah. too. I sleep yeah. to the sound of a thunderstorm. I do too. Oh, yeah. rain. What are you talking about? Yes. I love that rain. I love that rain. Like, man. Listen, <laughs> <Right. laughs> yeah. yeah. when I, I tell you, I'm gonna say yeah. about 15, yeah. 16 years. Every, yeah. every night, doing it. Every night. When I hit that, that button on that thunderstorm, boy, I am out gone. <laughs> yeah, done. Alexa, play rainstorm. Yeah, yeah all night. Exactly. Right, right, you know, Quick. Man. I'm out. Right. Yeah. So the final you know, one, the final one is gonna be these, these few steps. Practice the man's guide to self-love. Number one, tune out negativity. Mm-hmm. Number two, celebrate accomplishments. Number three, love on yourself. Mm-hmm. Number four, nurture your interests. That saxophone, nurture your interest, and tell yourself you deserve it. Mm-hmm. All the time. Yeah, that, that's motion, the most important part. When you go buy shoes, when you go buy your watches, instead right. of when people oh, yeah. question why you, I deserve because it. I deserve it. Exactly. Because I work for it. Because friends. I put myself in that's the position right. to have it. That's right. right. Anytime I get a new car, why you got a new car? Your old one? No, it wasn't towed up. Because I deserve it. Right. Exactly. Because I want it. Because right. I put right. myself in the position to get it. That's so, why. So now it's time for this segment called Ask Bro Code. Yeah. My boy Coop stirring the pot up. Go set. What's he got? What's he got? See that heat coming out? What's that heat coming out? Go on, get it, Rico. All right, let's see what we got. <laughs> All right. What would you say is the proper time frame to heal from a relationship before moving on to someone new? We did that one. That, yeah, that was, we, yeah, let's, we did let's that. Get yeah, that. I think we did that one. Okay, yeah, yeah. We did that one. Do over. Do over. All right. Okay, at what age were you giving the best financial advice and who gave it to you? Mm. Ooh. Um, me, I would have to be saying <clears throat> I was 12. And my, my, my grandma, God rest her soul, gave it to me. She taught me how to budget. She told me the importance of keeping receipts, regardless if you bought a piece of bubble gum. She said, keep your receipts. Mm-hmm. So her teaching me the importance of saving your money, budgeting, you know, basically everything you see, you ain't got to have. You know what I'm saying? Give you a set. Me, what I do, I tell people all the time, people say, you got a lot of stuff. But what I do is, like, if I see a shirt on Monday, Nine times out of ten, I'm not going to go back and get that shirt until probably like Friday or Saturday. That gives myself that whole week just in case something come up, okay? If nothing comes up, then it meant for me to have that shirt. So when I go back, if it's there, it meant for me to have it. If not, then it meant for me to have it. So sometimes you have to have self-discipline when it comes to, but yeah, that's what she taught me. My grandma taught me that. Man, I'm going to probably say, ooh, man, uh, I probably was in my 20s, uh, probably early 20s. And it came from my best friend, man. Like, shout out to my best friend, T. Miller, man. Like, mm-hmm. uh, we've grown as men together. We've grown as fathers together. Uh, and we always, like, uh, hold each other accountable for things, right? So uh-huh. um, he joined the military straight out of high school. Mm-hmm. Shout out um, to T. Miller. That's and, our classmate, right? Right, right, right. Class Miller. of 95. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. But even, <laughs> even during our high school years, man, when we were working, he always stressed the importance of saving money. Mm -hmm. He always had multiple accounts where he would put money in. Mm. Um, And so I learned that from him. So, you know, in in keeping with that, not just, you know, putting money in in, a checking account and a savings account, but as the years, you know, passed and he learned more, we learned more, he always, you know, shared information, CDs, stocks, bonds, Mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, yeah, man, I learned that from him. I didn't, I didn't get that financial yeah. um, conversation from, I got, oh, you need to save money. What does that look right. like? Right. <laughs> right. From my right. parents, right. like, right. save right. money. Right. Save what money. does that look yeah. like? I don't know yeah. what that is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Put it in the draw, put it in the sock. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my, said, my best friend, man. For, for me, man, I, I didn't get mine until late, you know, um, to be honest. Um, I was in my 30s when yeah. um, I came across... Um, Dave Ramsey's Total Money Makeover. Uh, that's when I learned about emergency fund and, you know what I'm saying, like mm-hmm. having, you know, three to four months of um, all your expenses, you know, in an mm-hmm. account and everything like that. Um, I, you know, credit cards. I mismanaged credit cards, you know, 
not too much through college, but when I got to Atlanta, you know, making, you know, having a decent salary and getting credit mm-hmm. cards, being having good credit, and just kind of mismanaging that credit process mm-hmm. and everything like that. So when I came across Dave Ramsey, it kind of made me more disciplined. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, I backtracked again, you know, having a family. It just, you know, you go through these different, you know, uh, ups and downs, ups and downs yeah. in life, and it's like you get different lessons through it all, mm-hmm. you know. So uh, I would say Dave Ramsey was, was my introduction to Sound financial man. Uh, I would say for me, um, I, I looked at all the day Ram stuff, stuff mm-hmm. that's awesome stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So, but at a young age, I was probably about I don't know seventeen, maybe something like that. And it was a a, a boy that was younger than me, I think, that worked in High Five Buys. If y'all remember High yeah. Five oh, Buys, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and so I was in there, you know, what I'm saying I had a job at the time. I started working early or whatever, right. and I was getting a bunch, of, and I was in the stereo system, right? right. So I was getting mm-hmm. some stuff, and High Five Buys was higher end than like Circuit City and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Right, 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 so right. I'm in there like, man, I want I want this that, right? Mm-hmm. So he started calculating it all up, and when that price hit, I'm like, whoa! Yeah. And then he said one thing. He said it costs the floss. Mm-hmm. So in my mind, I said, man, well, if it's certain things in life that I'm going to want, I'm going to have to work hard for them. I'm going to have to save that, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm going to have to work for it yeah. to get the things that I want. Right. Yeah. So mm-hmm. so some young boy in, in, in high five buys. Yep. Cost yeah. the flaws. Wow. So we got time for another one. Do one real yeah, quick. I, I do a quick one real quick. Let's see what we got with this. Is, uh... Oh, this this come from Stacey Harmon of Tucker, Georgia. Who is that? <laughs> what Stacey that? said, what mm. financial advice would you give a young man living on his own for the first time? Mm. Um, budget. Yes. Learn the art of budgeting. Budget. Learn the art of cutting back. Um, yeah. And not feeling like you're missing something. Uh, I think, I know, I've always been pretty good um, Pretty decent financially, I'll say. But I think when I got ready to buy my house, I think that taught me the best lesson financially. Like Mm -hmm. making money and having to show money made me eliminate a lot of stuff. Going out, going to the movies, buying alcohol, you know, all that stuff. It it was basically work, go home, work, go home, work, go home. And then you learn that lesson and the next thing you know, you got a surplus of money, and you like, where all this money come from? Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Yeah. And then it teaches you that, okay, I can be financially sound and secure and responsible and mature, mm-hmm. and so you can do that for yourself and for a family going forward once yeah. you learn how to do that. Yeah, learn how to cook probably too. Yeah. Close it up. And if you don't know how to cook, you better better find somebody that can. That's right. That's Cause, right. Cause, Cause you eat not eating out all the time. <laughs> right. you, good. You, yeah. you go at the end of the month and you look yeah. at that your budget or whatever, because you know most of these these apps now, I mean, you know, mm-hmm. online banking to show you what you're spending your money on. Yeah. And it'd be food, you know what I'm saying? So that's yeah. that's some advice. Yeah. Cook or, or find so, food. hey. It's your boy from Bro Code. That's going to be our show. Yes, See y'all on the next episode. Peace. 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 Peace.